Hey everyone. So today we're going to talk about Stan Meyer methods of current limiting. You know, one thing Stan did, if you start researching his work, you realize whenever he had a problem, he didn't just go at it from one angle. He found as many ways as he could to solve that problem and used every one of them. So here in methods of current limiting, I'm going to explain all the things that I've uh, learned over the years and they're all in order from least to greatest. So first off, stated in the technical brief, Stan Meyer used water as a resistive element. If you do the calculations of the VIC, you find the cell's minimum resistance should be about 28 ohms. That's based on the impedance transformation of the transformer. So 28 ohms per cell times 10 cells gives you 280 ohms. I know some people are going to say, well, there are 11 cells there. Well, in the tech brief, Stan stated the 11th cell was used as a steam resonator, so look into that and you'll find it. Now in a previous video, I measured my cells, which are almost identical in geometry to Stan's, and I get 23 ohms with tap water. So Stan recommends using rainwater, you know, or maybe the water that he used had a fewer contaminants, so that's why he's designed his for 28 ohms per cell minimum. Number two, Stan didn't use electrolyte. He mentioned this numerous times. Without electrolyte, you have a low ionic mobility, which essentially means you have a higher resistance to current flow. Number three, he reduced the electrode surface area. And every design he did, um, you know, his tube started out pretty big, and then eventually he went down to the injectors. This is part of the reason why. So. In my test in a previous video, I showed that when you have identical pairs of electrodes with the same gap between each one, if you reduce the surface area by one half, the resistance between the electrodes is doubled. And number four, Stan still needed in his 11 tube fuel cell, his water fuel cell, he still needed a large surface area um, based on the voltages he was using in the gap to produce the gas that he needed. So with that large surface area he has the problem of a lower resistance. How does he solve that? Cuts it up into multiple cells, connects them in series. And that gives you the resistance total. You know each cell can be viewed as a resistor. So now here's the formula for resistances in series. RT is R1 plus R2 plus R3 and so on. Now one good uh, benefit of connecting them in series, it also reduced the total capacitance. This is the capacitance in series formula. And if you think about a cell, right, you're producing gases. What do those gas bubbles do? First off, when you convert water to hydrogen and oxygen gas, the expansion in volume is over 1800 times. So think about every gas bubble essentially 1800 times the size as it was when it was water. Now that displaces water out of the cell. Not only that, but the gas bubbles, the hydrogen and oxygen, have a dielectric constant of one, or close to one, which is about 78 times less than what water's dielectric constant is. So if you can reduce the total capacitance, you can reduce the resonant bandwidth and the effect it has on resonance. And number five, the resistance of the secondary and the choke coils. They're all in series, so that gives you the same uh, formula here. They're measured by Don Gable years ago. He actually got a hold of one of Stan's original five coil VICs, about 219, 220 ohms. And number six, the choke impedance. First off, the technical brief states that this choke and the cell are in a series resonance circuit. So their impedances cancel each other out. And he also says that this inductor here restricts the current. There's a lot more to that. And they actually flip-flop rolls, but we'll get into that later. And number seven, gas bubbles. In my previous video, I explained and gave references in scientific papers that stated Gas bubbles on electrodes reduce the surface area, and gas bubbles in the solution reduce the current cross-sectional area. Now number eight. This is a very important part of Stan Meyer's work, something that hasn't been talked about much on the forums. 
but this is one of the solutions to understanding what was occurring in the cell. The formation of an electric double layer capacitor. So when you restrict the Faradayic current, which is the current that feeds electrolysis, the current then charges the electric double layer capacitor. What is the electric double layer capacitor? Essentially this is what it would look like in a diagram. You've got your electrode here, your electrode here, this one's positively charged, this one's negative. Now the ions drift to the electrodes, but the exchange of electrons is restricted. So now between this row of ions here and the electrode you have a capacitance and then you have a capacitance here. In the bulk of the water there's very little effect and actually what happens the electrodes act as blocking or partially polarizing electrodes. That's a term in electrochemistry. If you study electric double layer capacitors you'll find these terms. So the double layers restrict current beyond all previous methods. In one of my papers here it states if the voltage across each double layer is equal, the electric field in the bulk is virtually zero. This is the bulk here. So the electric field in the center portion of the water is zero. And then if that happens, the current goes to zero. This is one reason I believe why Stan talks about the importance of voltage balancing in the technical brief. Characteristics of the double layer capacitor. Essentially, it's a supercapacitor. Uh, extremely high electric field strengths. That's because now all your electric field is between the ions and the electrodes. The electric field in the bulk is almost non-existent, like it says here. Electric field in the bulk is virtually zero. So current limiting is one of the effects. Field dissociation of water molecules. Now the capacitance changes with voltage, which is one problem that we have the scanning circuits for, and some very important things we're going to discuss in later videos that make a lot of Stan Meyer's technology possible. Go ahead and study electric double layers and see what you find. You're going to find that it gives you a way of complying with Faraday's laws of electrolysis, um, but producing much more gas. That's all I got for now. Much more to come. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.